Hello guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Doody. I'm here with Lozzie again. Guys, some of you may have been around this time last year when me and Lozzie were doing conspiracy videos. We were doing murder videos. So we've got a new studio being built for some purposes that will remain unknown unless you're in the know, in which we will be continuing this series in that studio. But until then, we're going to do it here. So basically the premise is I bring a murder case to Lozzie. I can't can't take the credit for this. Shout out to Scott Evans. He's got a fucking corker because this is a serial killer from the 1550s, right? Nice. Just like, well, 25 years. So 1550s to 1575. He believed he was a werewolf. So he, he does slip into the cryptid genre as well as the serial. So we're killing two birds with one stone here, basically, mate, right? Now, there is actually a mental illness, which is something like delusional lycanthropy basically where you believe you're a wolf sounds right? right sounds about right well i mean the thing is i think i think it's sort of like them people you know it's a full moon you know the whole you know yeah. what i'm saying when we went on our exploration the whole druid shagging trees and that yeah i think it's i think they fall under that echelon do you know what i mean they well, sort the of go group. out and get funky in yeah. the woods and that do you know what i mean but anyway right so this is a real thing okay and also, let's just for a second, all right, and I know it's going to switch a lot of people off, yeah? Werewolves may have existed. Maybe they just become extinct, all right? And that's going to, uh, you might be laughing right now, but once I read you all these details, you're going to think, dude, you bang on. This is the story of Peter Stump. He was German, though, so oh. he's probably Peter Stumpf, right? Fair. Now, it is theorised his surname actually wasn't Stump, but he was given the surname Stumpf in legend because he didn't have a left hand. He just uh. had a Stumpf, right? It was cut off. And somehow in the 15th, 16th century, he managed to survive with just a Stumpf. Peter Stumpf, yeah? The werewolf of Bedburg. So, Peter, yeah, he was born in a village in Eprath near Bedburg, where he would become the werewolf of Bedburg. This is just for any geography nerds out there, it's 30 miles west of Cologne. And in the 16th century, he was up to no good. From 1545, 1550 onwards, he got a lot of kills in a 25 year period. Let's just say his KD was high to say the least. As soon as you said that, I was thinking of KD. He was kind of seen as a stand up gentleman, all right? He was a farmer, he earned a decent wage. So he had a wife that passed away, but he, he had his fair share of mistresses and he also had oh. some children as well, right? They will become very integral very so soon. He's a functional member of society. Most definitely. You wouldn't think he's the one handed werewolf killer, which is how he got away with it for so long. So from the age of 20, 12, right, Peter had a very fond interest in the dark arts, dark magic, sorcery, yeah. By the age of 20, he sold his soul to the devil. Oh. As you do. Now, this is where it gets very funky, right? So you sell your soul to the devil. He's like, thank you very much. What can I give you in return? He gave Peter Stumpf a belt. Now, this belt is what turned him into a werewolf, not the full moon. See, you think you know the details. You don't know shit, son. He had a fucking devil belt. He puts uh, it on. It's a devil belt. Devil belt puts it, it on and turns like, him into a fucking werewolf, mate. Not like a fucking Primark fucking premium. Nothing. Nothing like that, uh, mate. Yeah, didn't have shit on this devil belt, let me tell you. Okay? Now, this is from a piece of text written at the... Well, not at the time, but after his serial killings came to an end. Okay? Right. right. So, devil gave him a belt in return for his eternal servitude. Okay? The original text says... The devil who hath a ready ear to listen to the lewd motions of cursed men, promised to give him whatsoever his heart desired during his mortal life. Whereupon this vile wretch neither desired riches nor promotion, nor was his fancy satisfied with any external or outward pleasure, but having a tyrannous heart and a most cruel bloody mind, requested that at his pleasure he might work his malice on men, women and children in the shape of some beast, whereby he might live without dread or danger of life, and are known to be the executor of any bloody enter- Sorry of any bloody enterprise which he meant to commit. I'm not being funny, right? You're the devil, yeah? This guy's like, right, can I sell you my soul, please? He's like, yeah, sure, sweet, what do you want? And he comes out with that shit. <laughs> Even as the devil, you're gonna be thinking, mate, you are fucked. See, let me get this straight. You want me to imbue you with the power to kill women, men and children? Okay, I'll get it, I'm the devil, I can fuck with that, yeah? 
You want to get away with it? Okay, I can fuck with that. You want me to turn you into a beast? Sorry, what? Where the fuck? I could make you invisible. I don't know. I could. Uh, where the fuck? You're fucked, mate. I could sort your taxes out. I could grow your fucking left hand back. <laughs> well, it. Do you want me to say so? You ought to be more powerful than me. <laughs> That's it. He's actually trying to write. Anyway, if I was the devil, I would have been like, fucking hell, mate. You're fucked. Anyway, the devil who saw him a fit instrument to perform mischief as a wickened fiend, pleased with the desire of wrong and destruction, gave unto him a girdle, which, being put around him, he was straight transformed into the likeness of a greedy, devouring wolf, strong and mighty, with eyes great and large, which in the night sparkled like unto brands of fire, a mouth great and wide, with most sharp and cruel teeth, a huge body and mighty paws, and no sooner should he put off the same girdle, but presently he should appear in his former shape according to the proportion of a man, as if he had never been changed. And with that swiftly made deal, Peter began his life as the werewolf of Bedburg. So he's got his girdle, which for those of you who haven't played World of Warcraft or seen Game of Thrones, is a belt. Next 25 years, reign of fucking terror, yeah. mate. Because at the end of the day, he does his devouring and shit, Wax the girdle off, he's just a mere mortal once more. He also didn't say when he sold his soul how often he would be using the power given to him. Well, this is it. it so, is... do you know what I mean? You're going to be like, just calm down a bit. Let's leave some people for other people who want to, you know, do some demonic shit. So, obviously, with this disguise, he can come and go as he pleases, right? He can do his murderous intentions and then he can go back into his human form. Right, so he really does have the power of both worlds and he used it to the maximum. He was very well respected in his community. Socially, everyone was like, what a geezer. Oh yeah, you're right, Pete. Yeah, not too bad, sweet. High five, oh, sorry, didn't mean that. And then you just go about your day. Little did you know, that every nightfall, he'd find a woman. And he, he, had a, he had a sweet tongue, do you know what I mean? He could, he could, he could talk to the ladies oh. and he would coax them out into the fields at night where he would rape and murder them and sometimes like the devouring wolf he was devour them well that's it that's fucking it apparently he would pluck out their throats and tear their joints asunder once he had done this he would simply take off the girdle slip back into his human form and sometimes even console the families of the dead that he had murdered and oh, devoured that's just oh. within the first few years he had apparently killed 13 young women, two pregnant women, apparently eating the unborn children from their stomachs after he had killed them. That's pretty demonic. That is as dark as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. Now I know what you're thinking, dude, this story's bollocks. This is just, this is a historic event. This did happen, guys, right? I think what is going I reckon that the were right now, I reckon the werewolf angle was probably bollocks. But I think this is, you know, 15th, 16th century hearsay, a serial killer who maybe killed people animalistically. Maybe even when he was caught, believed he was a werewolf and told his story of how he sold his soul to the devil and stuff. So over the next 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years, this story evolved and evolved into where this guy is a werewolf. So please don't switch off it gets even juicier. Now obviously you can't just go around massacring a whole village because you're going to run out of people quite quickly, yeah? And then once you're conveniently the last one left, there's only one person to point the finger at, right? So, when it was less fruitful, yeah, when he had to be smart about it, he would kill cattle and other livestock animals, but he would eat them raw. So this oh. dude was an animal. Obviously he had to keep up appearances, right? So he was a family man, yeah? And to say, well, he, he maybe took that a little bit too far. He had an incestuous relationship with his daughter, oh. right? Who they had a child with, and his own sister, right? So he really did keep it in the family. Now, there was also a mistress called Catherine Thompson, I believe. Catherine Trompin, I do apologize. Catherine Trompin. Now, Catherine was said to be so beautiful, you basically couldn't comprehend. She was the female embodiment of perfection. Apparently, a gift from the devil himself. Fucking hell. He's giving she a does. I oh, know, mate. You, were, you, did, uh, you only asked for a belt, mate. And I thought, for your soul, I actually felt bad. So here you go. Here's some sweet boom. 
Here's some sway Catherine boom. This mistress was apparently a gift from the devil. Okay, so she comes into it later on as well, right? So after a while of trying to tame it a little bit, you know, to not be suspicious and that, his lust for blood just grew too much. So that he was no longer selecting attractive women to kill and rape, etc. He was just killing every fucker he could see, right? It was GG at this point. He became so bloodlustic, don't know if that's right, that he actually turned his gaze to his own son. Fucking hell! Not only did he murder his son, he crushed the skull of his son and ate his son's brains. Oh. John, All that knowledge. How fucked up would it have been, just a side note, if he'd cannibalised all his, like, human victims. Yeah. But then when he came to kill him cattle, he'd, like, you know, put it on the front barbecue. <laughs> yeah, he treated him with respect. <laughs> yeah. And that seems like the kind of guy it'd be. Uh, when you said he, he crushed his son's skull and ate his brain. Yeah, so he could get the brain was that, was that the one that wasn't incestuous? See, that's what I'm trying to figure out, mate. So, uh, at this point, he's killed so many people, Loz, including his own son, that the documents actually just stop counting bodies. <laughs> that's when you know you've got a decent kill count <laughs> in, in your, in your uh, portfolio. It just simply states that he killed many people after this. It does document a few ways that he killed people. Apparently he came across two men and a woman in the forest and he basically, he knew who they were so he whispered one of their names. He came across into the bush. He fucking quickly dispatched him. Did the same with the <laughs> other guy. Dispatched <laughs> him. Right, We're talking Ezio Assassin's Creed oh, shit here, Loz. Yeah. Right, subtle. Then he's like, you're next. Chased the woman, raped and murdered. It was kind of his MO. Obviously now 25 years have passed, a lot of people have died, and they are starting to get a little bit suspicious of RP. Okay? Yeah, I would be. And so the you know the whole town changed. I don't know how it took two and a half decades, but you know, people are aren't going out alone, they've got bodyguards, there's armed patrols and stuff all in the, around this town and village, right? Okay. So what they do is they set up a, like a village militia, they go out into the woods at night, and they actually track down the wolf. Now, in this information, it says they tracked down the wolf. Uh, the wolf went once, you know, pinned, removes the girdle, and then obviously it reveals Peter. I would say that's probably bollocks. And they went in there and they found Peter being a bit rabid, right? So anyway, they bring him back to the village, put him in front of a magistrate to be arrested, and they put him on the rack. Nice. Right, yeah, Sounds... so they're fucking pulling his joints about, oh. you know, they're cranking it. He panics, he spills the beans on everything, right? The devil, the lot, which I think is where this legend has started. So it's a serial killer spilling the beans on selling his soul to the devil, everything I've just sold you, right? All the murders and stuff, okay? So they're like, right, you're a bad person. And you practice witchcraft, sorcery, and all that sort of stuff, which back in them days you didn't want to do. I will do a video on the sale on witch trials. If you want to see me do that, please let me know down below. Okay, so on October 31st, Halloween, ladies and gentlemen, 25 years after the murders began, in a square of Bedburg, and in the presence of many peers and princes of Germany, oh. Peter Stumpf was placed on a device known as a breaking wheel. Sounds a good. large cartwheel where he was tied and bound with red hot pincers, his skin was torn from his bones. His arms and legs were then broken with wooden hatchets. Mercifully, he was at last killed outright through beheading and finally his body burned. Deemed as accessory to murder, his daughter Sybil, yeah, the incestuous one, and his mistress Catherine, thought to be the gift from the devil, were also found guilty. However, they didn't go through all that. Their method of execu execution was they were thrown onto Peter's burning body and therefore set fire themselves Jeez. and reduced to ashes. Now the belt was apparently discarded by Peter in the forest, never found. He claimed the devil came up and took it back. He took back what was his, <laughs> which, is why the, which is why the werewolf belt was never found. So let's just dissect this for a lot. For, Lars, first of all, what do you think? In incredible story. Yeah. You get, you, the one thing you do give him props for is his character development. 100%. Yeah. He certainly had an arc. Yeah. 
He certainly I mean, a bit of a wall. Well, not quite Walter White, no. but uh, he, he, you know, he, he certainly had. He had a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's more like a what you always appreciate. A Tuco Salamanca. Yeah. Great shout. That's great it. shout. And that's what I think. That's what I think has gone on here, guys. Right? I think you've got a serial killer back in the Diz A. Yeah, 1540s. Right? If you can be like, oh, it's going to rain in a minute because you've cottoned on that when there's black clouds, it tends to rain. And then it starts raining. They'll be like, "You're a fucking witch. We're gonna see. Yeah. We're gonna prove you're a witch by seeing if you drown or not. If you drown, you're not a witch." So they weren't the most intelligent people yeah. back in the day, right? So what I think has happened is I think you've got a mentally ill man who's got that lycanop, lycon, lycanthropy or whatever, right? He thinks he's an animal. Yeah, he kills people. He kills women, children, men for many, many years. It catches up with him. He comes out with this story that he believes in himself, and that has then, through hearsay, developed into this tale, this legend of a real serial killer who believed he was a werewolf. So through time and German mythology, you have the werewolf of Bedburg. That's what I think has happened here, and I think it's a great story. I think it it's got a good it story. It's got it all, mate. It's got cryptid. It's got serial killer, true crime. It's got Loved it. cannibalism of his own son. This is it. He ate the brains of his own son. Uh, That's dark. You don't get that in any fun blockbuster film. That's it. You don't see Tom Cruise doing that. Nah. You don't see Tom Cruise doing that. But there we go, guys. What do you think? Lastly, thank you for joining me on this, mate. I enjoyed it. It's yeah. been good. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. Like I said, this is going to be on more on conspiracies than on true crime. But the conspiracies and stuff is going to be in a different studio, so look forward to that. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. Please let me know down below what you think of this story. I'm intrigued to know. If you want more content like this, let me know down below. Hit that like button, share, subscribe. If you can become a patron, that'd be amazing. All the links to that sort of stuff is down below. Twitch.tv for slash Doody Rhino as well. Lozzy, what's your YouTube, mate? Just Lozzy. There you go. Z-Z-Y. There we go. That'll be linked down below as well. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you very soon. Sweet one, geese.